uh, Naomi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so I need somebody to confirm that we touched on all these things yesterday. I joined a bit, but my network was really crappy and I couldn't join till the end. So I was not sure where the class ended. So can somebody confirm that to me, please? Feedback, 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 feedback. Yes, we did. We touched them. Oh, okay. Okay, awesome. Yeah, but personally, I would, I would like us to do like a review because I didn't really understand a lot. It was um, uh -huh. a lot of information because of the talk, talk, talk. So I okay. Like okay. okay, awesome. It's actually plan. It's part of my plan to do a recap this morning. Um, okay, okay. Thank you so much for for the recap. Okay, um, let's start by let's start like this. Okay, so um, let me share my screen. Mm, okay. Okay, so actually today, can we see my screen, please? Yes, we can. Yes, we okay. can. Okay, thank you. Okay, so today we are going to be touching on creating your research report, affinity mapping, extracting ideas from the research data, introduction to Miro, and competitors, um, competitors analysis. That's what we'll be doing today. But then uh, before then we'll be doing a little recap. Okay, so um, okay, so I know that somebody's there wondering why why use the research. Hence we just go ahead and just design something, you know, create something pretty and all that. And um, and like the saying goes that when we don't know the use of a thing, abuse is inevitable, right? Okay, so I want us to start by really understanding what research is. Uh, but before then, please, guys, um, if um, if my network is bad, please, I need you to tell me immediately so I switch. So please, feedback is very important. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, first of all, I want us to understand that everything that we're doing is for the user, right? Uh, from the research to the design to the pretty things that we eventually create, everything is for the user. Okay, so I understand that you're a UX designer or you call yourself a product designer. They are the same anyways, they are the same. Okay, and in your head, you believe that, okay, I just want to create stuff. I just want to build stuff. I just want to build pretty products and all that. But then it's beyond you. At the end of the day, it all should be user-centered. And what does that mean? Um, it means that everything from start to finish, you are, I mean, everything is about the user. There's nothing that you're doing because you want to do it. You're doing it because it will make the user's experience better. Everything that is actually for the user experience, basically. Um, okay, so I I want to ask us a few questions. Okay, so when we see e-commerce sites like um, the Jumia, like Gigi, um, why do we think they use they use the icon of a shopping cart on their sites? I need responses, please. I'm sure that you have used a couple of um, e-commerce sites and of course there's always that shopping cart icon there. Have, have you ever wondered that why did they use it? Anybody please? Yes, I guess um, that, um when anybody like a user looks at the um the icon the shopping cart icon person knows immediately that it's a an e-commerce website and it's for shopping. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Mary Ann, you want to say something? Yes, I wanted to say the same thing that the shopping cart, um, it's an icon that shows like the shopping, buying something. So um, it indicates that, okay, this is an e-commerce website. Okay, 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 good. 
Thank you so much. Uh, Iomedia says to make it easier for a user to know where their goods are. <laughs> okay, that's awesome too. That's awesome because, okay, so um, you can be on the site and you can just keep picking things. Okay, so I'm sorry, you will hear a lot of okay, so, so just get used to it. Okay, so when we go to um, a shopping mall um, to buy stuff, usually, except if you are there for one or two things, usually you want to pick up the shopping cart, um, the shopping, what's it called now, a cart that is on the floor. You want to pick it up so that you could put stuff inside. And that is, of, of course, is to make your, to make your shopping easier and all that. So um, putting a shopping cart on the e-commerce site, like, like I already said, is one of the reasons is for um, users to understand that, okay, all your goods are there. Okay, so why you're shopping? Because you can keep shopping. You can, of course, we want you to buy a lot of things. And at the end of the day, you might be wondering, that, okay, I've been clicking, where, where, where are my goods? Like, where is, where is all the stuff that I've been buying? So one of the reasons is for you to know that, okay, all those things are there. Also, when we are designing, okay, so there's something called um, the heuristics of UX design. And one of the things there is that it's, um, we design, um, how do I put this? We design to match um, the, the user's experience, like physical experience. Just like I said, that when you go to a shopping mall as a person and you go shopping, you are going to use a shopping cart, except you just want to buy one or two things that you can carry in your hand. But usually you will go, you will take a shopping cart, right? Okay, so when they put the cart, there's just for you to, it's, it's, it's for them. Um, also, I want us to answer this. So when you think of WhatsApp, what color comes to mind? Green. Awesome. How about Facebook? Blue. Wonderful. So all these things are actually user experience. Actually, they are trying to appeal appeal to the user's um, taste, the user's feel, and all that. Uh, well, let's go on by, okay, Joyce says it appeals to the user's psychology of actually shopping. Yes, that's, that's actually very true. Awesome stuff, thank you. Okay, so I want us to go over user research once again. Okay, so what exactly is user research? What exactly is user research? Like I um, said here, it is very essential in understanding the problem that we are trying to solve without the research. Okay, so one crazy thing about our job as UX designer is <laughs> you are not the user. Please, I want you to understand that. I want you to, I want it to sink into you. You are not your users <laughs> and your users are not you. So for you to think that, oh, if I make this thing, the users, just because you want it, you believe that the users want it, that's a lie. <laughs> that's a lie. So first debunk um, that um, thought, perish that idea. <laughs> so um, like I said, <clears throat> US research is very essential in understanding the problem that we're trying to solve. If you don't do your user research or if you do it wrongly, ah, Jesus, it can cost you a whole lot. It can cost your organization a whole lot. And, um, and you don't want to have that. Also, um, user research, it helps us, uh, who is that? Okay, user research also helps us to identify the actual pain points. Like I said, um, one thing you don't want to do on this job is to you. Okay, I think somebody is muted. Uh, who is that? Holiday now. Holiday, please, can you mute your mic? Your background is very noisy. Thank you. Okay, I think my noise is gone. <clears throat> Excuse me, like I was saying. Okay, so it helps you identify the actual pain points. And the whole reason why you are designing, of course, is to meet the customer's needs, to, to, to his their needs or to his to so ease their pain. So you have to really know what the pain is. That is also one of the reasons why we do um, research. It is also to validate and to invalidate your assumption. Like I said, <clears throat> one thing you don't want to do on this job is to assume. <laughs> you can't assume, you really need to do research. And um, doing research will 
point you to where you need to go, how you need to do it, when you need to do it, and all that. Um, okay. Also, user research, I have a definition here. It says, um, okay, please, at any point, if you don't understand anything, please, you can ask me a question or you can drop your questions in the chat box and I will attend to it as soon as I can. Okay, so like I have here, user research is all about identifying a problem and designing the solution. Like some of us think that it's just about designing a solution. Of course, you have to know the problem before you can design the solution to that problem so that you're not just designing for designing sake. Um, this requires extensive research and feedback from existing and potential customers. And also um, when we're designing, it could be for a new product and it could be for an existing product. Um, I don't know if any of us have ever, of course we must have experienced it. Have you ever wondered that, okay, so I used WhatsApp yesterday and this morning I'm trying to use my WhatsApp and it's telling me that an upgrade is available that I need to upgrade my WhatsApp or any app. I don't know anybody, have you experienced that? It just tells you an upgrade is available, you need to update it. Yes. Anybody? Yes. Okay. So what is going on is that somewhere, somehow, there's a user research that has gone on on the ground, and they know that okay, so we need to do this for the user now. The user needs this. Oh, this would elevate user experience. This will make um our existing users to keep using our app, and it will also help us onboard new customers and all that. Okay. So it's like the definition says it requires um extensive research and feedback from existing and potential customers. Really, you research, there's, okay, so there's pre-research, there's research while you're designing, and there's post-research. The point is, for any product, actually, you never stop researching. Actually, you never stop. It's, it's just, it goes on and on and on, actually, if you want to remain relevant in the market, actually. Okay. Um, the um, definition. During the research phase, your designers will launch surveys, uh, conduct interviews, usability testing, create user personas in order to understand the end user's need and objective. Um, they gather both qualitative and quantitative data and use this to make good design decisions. Um, learn how to conduct your user experience research from here. Okay. Um, I don't know, um, did Mr. Muiwa show you a video yesterday about um, the ROI of user research? Anybody? No. No. No, he didn't. Okay. I think I would want us, before we continue, I want us to see that video together um, in a way to help us understand why we need to do user research again. Um, just a minute. Domain.com is where an idea turn. Uh, let me share. Let me share my screen. Okay, right here. Please, can we see my screen? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Please, I want to pay attentive and um, pay attention and be very attentive to this. Um, um, to this video for some of us is going to help us on this journey and i know that some of us like like me <laughs> we hate user research i don't like user research trust me <laughs> it can be very boring it can be very boring but it can be so essential to your design if you get your user research wrong you might you might guess your whole product wrong really so i want us to pay attention as i play this video you can just note one or two things that you learned and I'll be asking us after the video. Thank you. Turns into something real, where a spark of inspiration becomes. User experience is the science and art of designing a product like a website or software application. So I'm sorry, before we go on, can you hear that? I just want to be sure that we're on the same page. Yes, we can. Yeah. And sound, is the sound clear? Yes. Is there any echo? No, it's okay. Okay, okay. 
Let's go on. So that it's easy to use, so that it fits the expectation that the user has for it. It's breaking now. I think your network is full. It's breaking. Really? Can somebody confirm that? Yes, it's breaking. It's breaking, though. It's breaking. Wow, 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 wow. What do we do? Uh, I need this to not break right now. Okay, let's watch. Sorry, what did you say? Who is that? So can we get a link to the video? Yes, I'll, I'll send us a link. I'll send us a link. Right. Yes. Okay. Sorry, let me just play it again. Let's see if it persists. User experience is the science and art of designing a product like a website or software application so that it's easy to use so that it fits the expectation that the user has for it, and so that it meets business goals. There's a whole methodology around designing a user experience. And sometimes people ask me, is it worth it to do all that work to design a user experience? So let's talk about the return on investment or ROI of doing user experience work. IEEE is a professional organization that puts out reports and does research for programmers, developers, and engineers. And they put out an article called Why Software Fails. Here's some interesting data from the article. They estimate that the amount of money that is spent worldwide in information technology is estimated at $1 trillion a year. The percent of projects that are abandoned because they are hopelessly inadequate is up to 15% of all projects. The percent of revenue that goes to the IT group is 5% of a company's total revenue and up to 10% if it's a financial or telecommunications company. The amount of time that programmers spend on rework that is actually avoidable is 50% of their time. The cost of fixing an error after development is a hundred times that of fixing an error before development of the project is completed. Of the top 12 reasons that projects fail, three of the top 12 are directly related to what we would call user experience or user-centered design work. And those three are badly defined requirements, poor communication among customers, developers, and users, and stakeholder politics. So the kind of work that, that user experience professionals do, stakeholder interviews, user research, user testing, user-centered design, these are all things that can fix at least three of those 12 reasons why software fails. You actually can calculate the savings or additional revenue or benefit that you get from improving the user experience of a product. So let's look at some examples to make this more concrete. The first example I want to talk about is, let's say that you are a micro lending company. So these are uh, often nonprofit or organizations that look at situation. You so you have that? a website and people donate money at your website, but the searching and donating part of the interface that the website is confused. Is it breaking again? Yes, it's breaking. Wow. Let's take it back a little bit. Let's look try for again. donations from people Let me know if still that working. they take that money and they lend it out in very small loans to uh, people around the world who need the money to run a small or home business in order to better their situation. 
So you have a website and people donate money at your website, but the searching and donating part of the interface at the website is confusing and hard to use. And you have estimated that 50 customers a day are actually abandoning before donating because of the poor user experience. So let's do some calculations. Each customer, let's say, donates an average of $50 over the course of a year. So you are losing $2,500 a day or $912,500 a year. If you spend $50,000 to fix the user experience issues and another $50,000, let's say, to rewrite the, the code based on those user experience improvements, we can estimate you're gonna spend $100,000 improving the user experience. It will take you 40 days or a little over a month then to realize the investment because you've got $912,500 a year that you could improve. So in a little over a month, you've recouped your investment. There are many measurements that would be meaningful. For example, conversion rate. That's the number or the percent increase of visitors to a website who either buy or donate, or it doesn't have to have to do with money. It might be they take the action you want them to take, like register at the website. Or you might be interested in a decrease in the number or percent of drop-off or abandonment. A decrease in the number of calls to the help desk. Or maybe by making user experience improvement, you can reduce the amount of training that's required. For instance, if it's an internal software application. Maybe you want to increase the usage of a software application. Maybe you're looking to save user time, or maybe you want to save development time. Perhaps errors are what's, what you are trying to reduce. Whatever measure you choose, calculating the return on investment is a way to show the value of doing user experience work. Here's one of my favorite quotes from Albert Einstein. I think he said it best. Any intelligent fool can make things bigger and more complex. It takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. If you'd like your own copy of this drawing to download and print, go to humanfactors.com slash ROI poster dot ASP. Okay, that was it. I hope you were able to watch it to the very end. Let me just copy the link here. Hello. Hello, yes, guys. We yes, we are. Yes, we do. Okay. Yes, we do. Okay. Um, first of all, I've dropped the link in the chat box. You can you can go watch it later. Also, um, Naomi dropped the form for the attendance. Please let's fill the attendance. Thank you. Um, okay, so who would like to share what they learned? I'm sure that some somebody is probably saying, wow, like this is this is a lot. Like you didn't know that research was this important. So I, I want you to I want you to share. Anybody, would you like to share what you learned? Okay, um, so I think one of the things I learned is that when you do your research before beginning a project, you save yourself the stress of spending extra when mm. problems arrive. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you, Shane. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Who else wants to go? Chine, do you want to say something? Because I see that you're muted. Anybody wants to say something else? I mean, that video was a lot. You can't tell me that you didn't learn anything from that video. Anybody yeah, else? I okay. learned that um, what is causing well in projects, in products like this, is poor research. So, okay. um, yes, poor research about failure in the product. Okay, thank you. Any other person wants to say anything before I go on? Yes, yes, Anything? yes. Okay, okay, Chi, Chi Joke, right? Yes, Chi Joke. Okay. But I, well, from what I learned from the video, I think um, user research helps you to save time. It mm. helps you to save time that you would have used to implement what will not work. 
Mm, okay, okay, okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Any other person? Any other person before we go ahead? Okay. Um, well, you guys have said you have, you have said something good. Yeah. Um, well, if you say it, it helps to save time, um, the truth, the truth is when you start your research, it might look like you're wasting a lot of money. Like you said, I mean, like you saw in that video, it might look like a lot of money. You're wasting a lot of money. You're wasting a lot of time. Can't we just go ahead and just design? I'm sure that the customers need this. I'm sure that they want this. The point is they might actually want that thing. They might need that thing, but what if they don't want it the way you are designing it? So user research is, is, is the work, really. I tell you, user research is the work. Designing is, 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 let me say, 20 to 30% of the whole work that you would do. Your main work is user research. So from that video, you can see that if the research is not done, <laughs> That one is even another level, if it's not done. But then if it's done and it's not done properly or correctly, that's, I mean, at the end of the day, the company might be running into loss and you don't want that. So very important, user research is very important. Um, of course, the video has, okay, back to our screen. The video has helped us to understand why, why user research. If you don't do your user research, you won't really know the problem that you're trying to solve and you won't know how you really want to solve it. So that's user research help you do that. Then how do we go about user research? Um, we have different types of research. We have the um, quantitative and we have the qualitative. Okay, so when we talk about um, the qualitative, qualitative, um, it means that quality, you are, you are targeting quality of your research. Uh, I mean, from the word qualitative, it means quality. Yeah, it focuses on the reason and the motivation for action. So when your um, qualitative research um, example is interview and focus group. So when you're running an interview, I mean, an interview would probably be one-on-one. -on -one. It could be physical, it could be um, online, that's remote. But at the end of the day, it is you to a person or to just a few group of people. That's the other one, focus group. But now talking about interview. Okay, so when you're having an interview, it's conversational. You are at the interview, you're looking at the person's gestures. You're looking at what the person is saying. <laughs> you can be talking to somebody and the person is saying yes. And the person, the, bo the, the body language is saying no. Oh, do you like, do you like Milo? Mm, yes. I have said yes, have I not? But <laughs> the way I said yes, you, I mean, as a, as a UX designer or a UX researcher, you already know that mm, there's something there and you need to probe more. So interviews help you to get quality, quality data, actually. You get quality data, you are able to observe your, um, your user, you are able to, you are able to hear what they are not saying. Of course, they are saying something, but there are something, there's something that they are not saying, but you can hear it from their gestures, from their, the way they um, act and all that. So that is um, qualitative uh, research for you. The second one is focus group. Okay, so what's a fo um, focus group? Focus group is also like an interview, but it's, it's not just one person. Okay, an example is um, if you're trying to solve uh, a, pro a problem about gender, if you're trying to solve a problem about gender and you are focusing on the female gender, you could use a focus group. You could have um, three to five people, I mean, seated and you're interviewing them at the same time. That is a focus group. Focus group is like, is, is interview with um, more than one person and it is bound together with a similar course. I mean, the people, they are, I mean, like the example I gave, about the gender um, problem that you're trying to solve. These people are all ladies. Probably they are all between the ages of 15 and 22. I mean, they are just bound together with, um, with they are, there's just similarity between them. So that's a focus group and that is qualitative um, analysis, I mean, research. Also we have quantitative. Okay, so when we are talking about quantitative, we are, we are focused on um, a large number of data. Before I go on, please, can you guys hear me? <laughs> I want to make sure that I'm not talking to myself. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Yeah. Yes, we can. And do we understand that we following this? For me, yes. Okay. So far, yes. Gary, I see your question. I will come back to that. Um, okay, so like I was saying, quantitative um, research, that one is just about numbers. You just want to know how many people, you want to know um, how many people were able to uh, proceed to the checkout, how many, how many people were able to use the app, how many people were able to log in, how many people were able to change their profile picture. I mean, it's just about something that you can measure. You just want to know how many. That is just what quantitative um, research is. And um, examples are um, surveys and questionnaire. I don't know if you have ever been somewhere and somebody came to me to that, oh, Hansi, please, can you help me fill this form, please? Just help me fill this form. I don't know if you have ever had that experience. That is, they're trying to do a research and that is quantitative research. Okay, so um, a major difference between quantitative and qualitative research is um, for quantitative research, quantity, um, the questions are fixed. Of course, that's why it's always, most of the time it's always printed out and is, is fixed and you are asking everybody the same thing. But for qualitative research, the questions are more open-ended. They are open-ended, they are not fixed. Of course, you have your script, you have the things that you really want to ask from your customers or from your users rather. But um, as the con because it's conversational, you are having a conversation with this person. Um, by the time you're asking one question and the person is saying one thing, you know that, okay, there's more to this question or there's more to this answer. Let me, let me go on with a follow-up question. Um, okay, so let me give an example. Um, okay, so if you're asking, um, okay, so we are doing a research. Okay, so want to do a research on Milo now. And you're asking your customer, um, how often do you take Milo? And your customers is the question, how often do you take Milo? Because you want to know, you want to know the accept, the acceptability in the market. You really want to know how many people are really using your product. Okay, so how often do you drink Milo? And the person says, mm, not very often. Okay, so a follow-up question could be, why? Why don't you take me low? I mean, something that probes, something that makes you get more, more answer pertaining that particular question. So for one qualitative research, rather, for qualitative research, it is more open-ended. It's, it's not one way. It is not straightforward. You have a script. And the script is to guide you, but as the research or as the yeah, as the research or the interview goes on, you know that okay, I need to ask more questions um, in this regard and all that. Okay, uh, also, how do I know which one to choose? Uh, well, it depends on your product, it depends on the uh, problem you're trying to solve, it depends on the organization you're working for, actually, because research can really cost money. It can really cost money. So it depends on the, um, the solution you're trying to bring, the products you're trying to build, the organization you're trying to, um, that you're working for. Okay, to Rosemary's question, how is money spent during research? Uh, well, how is money spent during research? Well, uh, do, 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 do. how do I answer this question? Um, okay. Okay, so like I said, there is pre-research. Pre-research is the research that you do before you build, before you even um, do any product. Like um, usually for new products, um, is before the product even, before you even start ideating and all that, you do your research. Okay, so you have like, you have an assumption maybe, or you have something, uh, you have something in mind that, okay, I think the customers need this. Okay, so pre-research is you going out to really find out, okay, so do the customers really need this like we think that they do? Are we together, please? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, so pre-research is 
really finding out, okay, do the customers really want this? How do they want it? What exactly do they want? And um, well, sometimes, okay, so there is a type of research too that you can actually pay people to research, to do the research for you. That's why I say it depends on the organization that you're working for. Um, and it depends on the kind of data that you're trying to get. Um, if you need like a large number of data and you really need it to be an interview, you really cannot go, okay, like, okay, so like the example that I cited about, um, okay, we're trying to know if our customers are really, how much people are really using Milo or taking Milo. And um, okay, so you need to interview a thousand people. <laughs> You as a UX researcher, how many people can you really interview? Like, I mean, then because interview is a one-to-one -one person, um, you are really limited because, okay, you are just in a place. Like you're in Lagos, uh, you're somewhere in Ikorodu. And okay, so if you go around interviewing people in Ikorodu, um, it means that you're, the people that you're interviewing, there's, there's, like, there's like a barrier because in a way you're interviewing just a few a few groups in a way, but do you know that you can actually pay somebody in Abuja to, to do that same interview? You can pay somebody in Portaco to do that same interview. You can pay somebody in Niger to do that same interview. And at the end of the day, if each person is doing five persons or you're doing 10 persons and you pay a lot of people, you can have a large number of data in a short time. And it's going to be a quality, quality data because his interview is one-to-one -one, um, compared to just, having a survey or having like a questionnaire and you just tell people to fill it. So in a way, you know how much that's going to cost you if you are, you know, recruiting researchers. There are people that, that is all they do actually. They are UX researchers. And I'm sure that Mr. Amuiwa would have mentioned to you that um, there are several, um, there are several faces or, okay, not faces. There are several and specializations in UX design. Um, did we discuss that, please? Did he mention yes. that? Too? Yes, he did. he did. Okay. So one of not one of um, the specialization is US research. There are some people that that is all they do. They love research and that is all they do. So you can pay them to actually do, do this research. If perhaps um, the time frame that you need to develop this product is actually very small. Because at the end of the day, really research takes time. But if, um, the organization that is employing you says, okay, I need this thing to be done in a month or in two months. And you know that this thing, research alone can take over a month and to design, that means it's going to cut the time of design, it's going to cut it short. So one of the things you can do is just employ researchers to, to do the work for you. So um, Rosemary, I hope I've been able to answer your question a bit. Um, Rosemary. Yes. Okay. 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 Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. So, um, I'm sure that we went through research plan yesterday. Did we, or do you want me to run over it again? Research plan, research plan, anybody? Please run over it again. Please run over it again. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll be as brief as I can. Okay, so I know by now, I, I hope we all understand why we need to do user research. It is very important. I cannot overemphasize it. If you get your research wrong, you get your products wrong and you cost your organization a lot of money. Okay, I see a typo here. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, research plan. Okay, so um, your research plan, of course, there will be a title in your research plan. Sorry, were you giving any templates for your research plan? Do you have any templates that you're working with? Yes. Any documents? Yes. Okay, yes. beautiful. Okay, so your research plan, of course, there has to be a title. Okay, um, I am aware that we have been, um, we have been grouped. Is that right? Is there anybody here who is not in a group? Anybody who is not in a group at the moment? 
Um, sorry, do we have do we have like a class spokesman? I don't want to say class rep. <laughs> do we have like a class spokesman? Somebody that speaks for the class. Yes, responsible we responsible for the class. Yes. Okay, see. so who is the person? Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay, beautiful. Okay, so Luashe is has everybody been grouped? Yeah, I believe everybody should have a group now. Except people who okay. probably uh, so Okay, please, if you don't have a group, please, I need you to drop um, drop a chat so we know to fix you up. Um, then, Shei, how many do we have in a group? We have five in a group. Some groups are less than five. Oh, and um, we are 42 on this call. If I remove myself, I remove Naomi, I think we'll have about 40 or 38 people. So that's about um, eight, seven, eight groups. Is that right? Yes. Okay, beautiful. Um, have we decided what we're, um, the problem we're trying to solve? Have we decided on that as a group? Luashi. Oh, okay. Um, every group is supposed to come up with a problem statement and do their research. Okay, for your own group, have you have you people yeah. done that? Have you guys done that? Yeah. We we sent out our questionnaires already. Okay, okay, beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so why do you people now want me to do research plan plan when you have already sent out questionnaires? <laughs> but it's fine, no problems. I'll just run over it then. Okay, All right. thank you, thank you, Shay. Yeah. Okay, so like I said, your research plan has to have a title. That's the problem you are trying to solve. Okay, like example, uh, we're trying to build an app for, um, we're trying to, okay, we're trying to create a solution for nursing mothers, recent nursing mothers, um, how, how to lose weight for recent nursing mother. Okay, so that's the research, that's the research. Um, the author of the research plan, that's a designer, that's you, stakeholders, Okay, stakeholders of the design are, okay, so who exactly employed you? But right now, I, I'm not sure that you have a stakeholder because we are just coming up with the problem ourselves. So you might not have a st stakeholder, but as you advance your, um, your career and um, people put you to work, people employ you. The people that employ you are the stakeholders. Okay, so there's actually two types of stakeholders. We have the internal stakeholder and we have the external stakeholders. Um, let me start from the external. Okay, so the external stakeholders are your users, actually. They are the ones that, de they are the one that determine um, how the product will be, what it will look like and all that. Okay, so I understand that as an organization, you're, um, okay, you're not the organization. I mean, the organization that, um, that employed you, they're trying to make money, they're trying to make profits and all that. But at the end of the day, they are not the one that will use these products. So you really need to hear from the people that will use the products to make sure that um, you're doing the right thing. So those are external stakeholders. They get to tell you what to do <laughs> in a way, actually, they get to tell you what they want. So that at the end of the day, when you build it, you would, you know, you get a return on investment and you're not just wasting your money and building something that is useless. Okay, so we have internal stakeholders too. Internal stakeholders are your employers, basically, people that employed you. And they also get it get to have a say in the design. So at the end of the day, um, the work of a product designer or a UX designer, whatever you want to call it, we sometimes or most of the time we act as intermediaries between the external stakeholders and the internal stakeholders. So the internal stakeholders, those are those that employ you, at the end of the day, most of them actually, all they want is we want to make money. We want to make profits. They don't really care what the user, <laughs> What the reason? What the user really wants? They don't really care. Some of them actually it takes a whole lot for them to understand why you need to do research. Some still don't believe that you should do a research. You get, but it is now your job as a UX designer to really make them see why they need to do research. Really. So for the um, employer, they just want to make money. They just want to. They just that is all they want. They want to make money. 
only a few of them really have the customers in mind. So it is your own job to put the customer in mind, to have them in heart and to fight for them with the internal stakeholders and also the internal external stakeholders. They, they just want, they want you to satisfy them. I mean, if you give customers, if you give them 10 miles, they will take, <laughs> they will have their way. They just want everything. But at the end of the day too, when we are designing, one of the heuristics of UX design is um, making sure that it meets business goals, that's for the internal stakeholders, and also it meets the user's needs. So at the end of the day, even though that everything that we're building, we're trying to meet um, the user's needs, we're trying to elevate the experience, we're trying to make sure that um, users continue to use our product and we onboard new customers. At the end of the day, too, we also should put it at the back of our mind that we are not a charity organization and whatever we're doing, we have to have profit. Okay, so that is that's about stakeholders. Are we together, please? Any questions so far? <laughs> Dosta says, mm, is money, oh, yes, so <laughs> is money for the stakeholders. They just want, they just want to make money. Um, are we together, please? Yes. Okay, yes. okay, okay, okay. So, date of your research plan, of course, date of the commencement of your research. Okay, so down to products or project background, as the case may be. Okay, so our project background. Um, when we are talking about the background, the question is, what are we trying to do? What product are you trying to build? What problem are you trying to solve? What solution are you trying to bring to the table? That is all about the uh, background. What have you, what, what, um, what research have you done that made you come into an insight that, okay, um, this product, the customers really need this product. So that is all about the project um, background. I have here, I said, um, what were the signals or the hypothesis that led to this research? The research that you are conducting now, what's, what's, what were the things that you saw? What were the hypotheses that you uh, were able to develop that led to this research? Um, what needs to be validated or un unvalidated or explored? Example, <clears throat> a user problem in the current state, business problem or opportunity. Also, what has been done prior to this research? Um, like I said, um, as we as designers, we are not just designing new products. Sometimes we are trying to improve on an existing product. Okay, so that's where this comes in. It says what has been done prior to this research? Is there any research that has been done before? I mean, okay, so if a product is existing, it means that there is already, um, there's already um, a research on ground, something that can also help improve your research because you know what is being done you know what is now needed, so you know what to do. Hey, baby. <laughs> Whose baby is that? Uh, Ibrahim Harafat. Please mute to mic. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. So what has been done prior to this research? Example, any solution ideas, research, analysis of the return on investment. Also, what is the purpose of this research? What exactly are we trying to get from this research? Okay, it's not enough for, for you to know the problem of the user. Excuse me. It's also very important for you to know, okay, this research that I'm, that I'm doing, what am I trying to get from this research? What insights will this research generate? How will those insights be used? And what decisions were made based on those research? So that's that about the project background. Then we have research goals. That's the business objective and the KPIs. That's the um, KPIs, key performance um, indicators. Um, okay, so for the objective, of course, the, ob um, the objective of any research is to increase um, operational efficiency or productivity. That's the, obje um, the objective of any research. And the KPI, um, that's time that they do on task, time, um, the time taken for a customer or a user to use a particular product or to complete a task, then the error rate while, um, while trying to complete that task, the error rate, then the adoption of a new tool. If 
it's an existing um, product. That means you are trying to adopt a new to maybe an upgrade to that particular product. So you need to test the adoption of that new product, uh, the new tool rather. Also, we have research methods. Um, we have research methods. Okay, so we have primary research and we have secondary research. In primary research, we have the SME interviews. We have user interviews, we have usability testing, we have post-section survey. Some of this um, research, some, some are done pre, some are done um, within when you are building the products. Um, okay, so the pre usually is the user interview, the SME interviews, those are people that, um, that are employing you. Uh, who is that noise coming from? Tonya, please mute your mic, thank you. Okay, so SME interviews are done pre, user interviews are done pre, um, usability testing. Okay, so that is done when you are already building your product and you want to make sure that you are still, um, you are still on track. Like I said, um, the whole uh, product design thing, the whole process is iterative. You keep going back to research. I mean, there's research at every phase of the design. Even when you are done with the product, you still keep researching just to make sure that, okay, the product that you built is still meeting needs. It's still elevating experience. Users are still um, enjoying the experience using this product and it's not, um, it's still meeting industry standards and all that. So usability testing helps you to know that, okay, um, based on the research, we're able to come up with this product, but is it, are we building it the way the user really want us to build it? and all that. So that's that about usability testing, post-section survey, um, that's post. Then we have secondary research. We have document review, heuristic evaluation. Um, heuristic evaluation, um, we have about 10 of them. Um, talks about industry standard, talks about meeting, um, meeting the organization goals, meeting the user needs, um, it's visibility of physical, the physical environment that is what you're building. How does it relate to their physical experience? There's a whole lot on, maybe we'll touch on that later. Then we have analysis, analytics review. That's where you have gone, on, gone out to do your research. What you bring back, there's an analysis on it. We'll review it and um, we have competitive analysis. Also, that is very important. That is very important. So when we're trying to build a product, okay, so if I'm trying to come up with a new beverage right now, um, we know that the big names in beverage, can we mention some, some big names in beverages right now? Anybody, anybody? Bon Vita. Bon Vita, beautiful, beautiful. Over thin. Overteen, beautiful. Peak. Any other one? Peak, beautiful. Why is nobody mentioning Lawyer. 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 beautiful. But I think Milo is still the well for me, Sha. I don't know. I'm not a really, I'm not a really beverage person, but I think uh, Milo is like the number one in the market. <laughs> they did not pay me for your for advice, but then I, I just believe. No, the, the market penetration is, is amazing. Okay, so we're trying to um, come up with a new beverage. One of the things that is important to do is competitive analysis. Okay, so what is competitive, competitive analysis? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, one said Milo. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what is... Please, uh, uh, is that rosemary or peace? Yes, Which rosemary. Friend? Rosemary, okay. Okay, so what is competitive analysis? Yes, I think competitive analysis has to do with um, looking at what um, your competitors, that's people who are also into the product you're trying to develop, looking at them, what they have, and how users respond to their product. So you can make yours better or um, look at things that they, don't in they didn't include in their product and include it in yours. Beautiful. Beautiful. Please, I would like to take permission to remove Rosemary from this training because it looks like you already, <laughs> you already know. 
<laughs> you already have all the knowledge. Um, but that's 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 really good. I mean, there's I don't even know what to say again. Okay, so like Rosemary said, uh, competitive analysis is basically spying on the existing products. I mean, you are carrying magnifying glass and you're looking at the existing products. Okay, so when you are looking at the existing product, you're looking at um, their strengths, what they are doing right. You need to know what they are doing right. Because when you are trying to come up with a new product, I think one of the um, things you should do is, or one of the things you should look into is how to make yours better than what already exists. So one of the things that you need to do is look at what they are doing right. And you need to know that down. That is already a benchmark for you, something that you need to do more. I mean, something that you need to scale over. Okay, also you're looking at their weaknesses. Okay, so it's already existing, it's already in the market, but what, what is it that is not so good about them? What are they doing wrong? Is there anything that they can do better? Is there anything that the, the um, consumers would want them to do better? So that's weaknesses. Um, also, we are looking at um, their penetration, market penetration. How is it? Is it good? Is it fantastic? Is it poor? I mean, that is basically what competitors are, are analysis it. It makes, it makes you to see what your competitors, the existing products, it makes you see what they're doing and it makes you see what you need to do and how well you can do better. If you don't know what they're doing right, or if you don't even know what they're doing at the moment, how can you know what to do? At the end of the day, if you don't do your um, competitive analysis, <laughs> if you don't do your competitive analysis, you might end up just building another product. I mean, just another product that will just be there. I don't know if you have um, noticed some um, gadgets that just come out and they're just there, like they're just there. I mean, you will hear some names like, it will to me. <laughs> like which one is this one again i mean okay imagine infinix infinix and um techno i mean they came into the market and right now they are topping the market i mean they came just like yesterday but i'm sure that they did something right they did their competitive analysis right they were able to see okay the existing um products what are they doing right what can they improve upon and one of the things that um techno and infinix and um phones like that what they are looking into is camera they know that people like <laughs> they like to, to take nice pictures they like to look good and all that so one of the things that they have been able to do well is to incorporate good cameras even though the phone is cheap at the end of the day it will have good camera because they know that you like camera so um what am i saying i'm saying that if you do your competitive analysis well you you would end up with amazing products really uh, milo okay <laughs> One he said analysis of your competition. That is exactly what it is. You are, you are scrutinizing your competition so that you can do better. That is what competitive analysis is. Okay, so research, scope, focus, area. Oof. Okay, um, question in your research scope. Of course, you have your research questions, you have your scripts. Um, you have the questions that you want to um, ask your user and um, it's based on what you're trying to solve. Um, Olushegum, can I hear from you? Um, what is the problem that your group is trying to solve, please? Let's hear from you. Okay, um, so we're, we're trying to, okay, our problem statement is that Many Nigerians. No, 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 no. I don't want your problem statement. What is the problem you are trying to solve? What's the title of your project? Okay, our product doesn't have a title yet. <laughs> My chest. <laughs> okay, let's let's have your problem statement. Maybe we can help you with your name. Okay. Um, that most Nigerians don't do regular health checkup. So we want to like find out the reason for that. Okay. Sorry, just a minute. Okay, okay, okay. But do you know that that's big? Do you know that yeah. that's big? Oh, you know. <laughs> you keep blowing my mind. Okay, so that's big because, okay, so you want to know why 
most Nigerians don't pay attention to their health. We don't go for regular checkup. <laughs> I can even tell you some reasons right now. <laughs> Number one reason is money in this country. <laughs> but that, that's just like me. Okay, first things first. Ah, you can't put the us. No, you can't put the cat before the us. You have to have a um a project name. You have to you have to have a project name before you come up with the project um statement with the problem statement. Okay. Okay. So um. Okay. Um. A project name. You can just have something around healthcare. Because I mean that's what your um your project is all about. So you can just coin anything out of healthcare. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay, thank you. So using that as a um case study. Okay, so questions. You might ask questions like, okay, um, how regularly do you do your checkup? Yeah. Um okay, um, Olusha, I'm not okay, I'm talking to the class right now. Um, yeah. Thank you. I'm using your this thing as a case study right now. Okay, so um, questions that we can have under that. You can ask questions like, how regularly do you do your checkup? And, um, or you can even ask, have you ever gone for a medical checkup? That should, even, I think that should, um, that should be one of the first questions that you ask. Have you ever gone for a medical checkup? Um, if they say no, why? Yes, that could be a follow-up question. Why? And you'd just probe them, let them explain why they have never gone for a medical checkup. And also, you could ask questions like, what do you think about... Um, okay, let, let me not say what do you think. How often do you think someone should have a medical checkup? How often? When we say how often in a year do you think you should have a medical checkup? So questions like that, you, should, you could also ask that, okay, why do, you, why do you think you need a medical checkup? Okay, so sometimes um, we might not do something because we don't, we don't really know the reason why we should do it, yeah? Okay, so when you're asking questions like that, it makes you to understand your user. It makes you to see how they see. It makes you to understand um, what they feel. And it just helps you channel um, your design. It, it helps you channel your design. Okay, one example that is here is, okay, how for, okay, this, this example now, the project title is employee time management. And the questions, one of the questions that they're asking is how they manage their daily task, what they spend most of their time on, what activities are perceived are unnecessary. So just make sure that, um, well, if you are using a survey, well, I, I guess for this project, most, most of you might have to use a survey because the time is really short. The time frame is really short. So you might use um, quantitative surveys and um, um, surveys and the rest of them. So um, you might have up to 10 to 15 questions. Just don't make it too long because we know that um, people don't like um, answering a lot. When, when it's getting too long, people get bored. So don't make it too long. If it was interview, three to five questions are okay. But you know that those questions are very important questions, questions that really that are tailored towards your design. But for, um, for surveys and questionnaires, you might have like 10 to 15 questions. But make sure that the questions that you're asking are they are channeled towards what you're trying to build. Um, okay, 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 okay. Okay, so that is that about the research plan, basically. That's that about your research plan. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? Feedback, feedback. Um, Report. Can we hear me? Hmm, this one that everywhere is quiet like this. <laughs> Please ask questions. Yeah, ask questions. Uh, ask questions. Uh. Any question? Yeah. Anything yeah, yeah, that you I have like? a question. 
Okay, okay. Please ask. Yeah, um, I guess this is more like a prerequisite to we learning how to actually design in the sense that, yeah, this is necessary in terms of we knowing what the content I'm going to put out. But um, apart from this, then I guess it's like a theoretical aspect and past aspect should be how to actually use those applications and making our designs, I guess. <laughs> what exactly is your question? Okay, you're saying that is there a theory, theory aspect to this, right? Yes, yes. Of course there is. <laughs> Are you bored already? Don't be bored. No. <laughs> I'm just curious. No, no. I know that research can be, oh, it can be. For some of us, we don't like research. But trust me, your research, research is important. It's impo you might not do a lot for these projects right now because, I mean, you just have four weeks and you're just going to learn the tools that you're going to use uh, for designing. So um, research might not really take long. So don't be scared. You, of course, yeah, we are still going to go into the main thing. You're going to, don't worry. <laughs> you learn to design. I know that that's why you're here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody else? Any comments? Any questions? Any observations? Before we move on to our research report. Okay. All right, um, I have a question. Um, Josh, right? Please go ahead. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you. So um, I want to ask a question in regards when you have a project um, or maybe a, a client or a stakeholder actually gives you a project um, and they want you to develop a solution for them, or maybe you are proposing a solution maybe to develop an application for a problem. And um, the stakeholder or the client is asking you that, how do this um, turn, as in how did this um, bring in revenue to them? Or how was the turnover, mm. what's the benefit that they can get from it? How do you actually answer this question? Because for me too, I feel like if I develop an application for you, how does it really turn into money or revenue? Because that's like the end goal for a company or anybody that bringing the solutions. So, like, what's what's like the best way of answering the question, or how do you feel, or how do you think it can also maybe turn into money in real time for them? Okay, wait. I want to understand something. Are you saying that how does the product you are building how does it make money for them, or is it research? You are saying that how does it? No, it's a product or not research. The product. <laughs> Okay, so um, because okay, I've you. been I've, I've been part of a uh, of a team before actually that wants to like uh, um, deliver a project for a client, so they are proposing what like a solution. Eh? What was it about? What was it about? Um, so it's more or less like a solution to cater for uh, their. Um, it's it's a it's a lounge. The place is a club. It's a lounge. So. Okay. To cater for maybe their booking, um, um, to make maybe their their um, attendance very the when maybe when people comes into the lounge to come and order for drinks or order for food instead of what exactly calling did you somebody. Build for them? Yeah? What did you build for them, Ganias? I see your hand. You go after. No, them. we've not we've not built it. So I'm not the one building it. I was just part of that. Okay. Um, I was just part of that. Thing. Yes, because I was also trying to learn UI UX. So they just put okay. me as an intern. Okay, so, so what exactly did the customer say they wanted? I'm just trying to get the whole So, it's, so okay. it's, it's not the customer that actually um, call reached out. You understand? I think somebody saw like a need in that place um, okay. to just provide a solution. You understand? So okay. then there's like a proposal. Then go and submit the proposal to the client. And the client was actually asking that, okay, in the end, at the, at the long run, what would be like my own gain? Like, what's oh. the turnover ratio? What's the profit? And why should I invest in this and all of that? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, okay. To answer your question, I would, um, I still don't get the full graphs of the particular projects you're talking about, but I would, I would go like this. Okay. So, um, for, okay, let's look at Airbnb. Do we know Airbnb 
or do we know Huba? Huba, I say Huba, Huba. Yes, yes. Okay, okay, beautiful. Um, okay, can you can you tell me what the Huba app? Can you tell me the the essentiality of that app? Do you think that app is making money for them? Yes, that app is making money. Okay, how how do you think he's making money for them? Explain. Mm. Um, because it's solving a major problem of, uh, let's say, giving you comfortability for transportation as a moving from one place to another. So, yeah. Um, so with that, um, they they make um, a lot of money because a lot of people um, actually need that um, solution. Okay, let me just step in right there. Okay, so the difference between Uber and the regular taxi driver on the road is that is the, the number of markets that they are reaching. That's the main difference between them, the number of markets that they are reaching. The taxi driver by the road, maximum, he has space for maybe five people. If you are in a town that they carry two in front, carry three or four at the back, maximum you have six, six um, to six space to carry people. But look at Huba. How am I saying Huba? Bye. <laughs> look at Uber. Um, Uber is reaching like a wide, a wide range of users, like a wide range. Is Uber is everywhere. Just like Airbnb, Airbnb is everywhere. Like you can reach out to them anywhere you are and they will come to you and you'll be able to use their products. But for the transit driver, if it's not, okay, imagine, <laughs> imagine if I'm trying to go to, okay, so I, I live in a Korodu and I'm trying to go to um, K2. If I, if I stand by the road, the, the regular taxi driver can only pick me if I'm by the road. That is when he can have an opportunity to make me his customer, to pick me up. But for Uber, <laughs> all I need to do from the comfort of my house, I can pick up my app and order a driver and the driver comes to me. Imagine a, like a wide range of people that are doing that in the day and how much they are making through that app. So imagine if Uber just had one car and gave one person to be doing taxi driver up and down. Can you compare the number of people that he's reaching when he's using one cab to when he's using thousands of cabs that like they're using right now? So Josh, I don't know if that explains like a bit to you. Also for, let's, let's consider a pastry shop. Okay, pastry shop that sells cake, sells sausages, sells chin chin, and a whole lot of that. Perhaps it's even a very big store. Uh, okay, perhaps it's even a very big store and they have a whole lot of products. Do you know that they can only sell, they can only sell to the people that come. It's the number of people that come that they get to sell if they, if they don't have like a mobile app or something. Do you, do you know that? Yeah. So in a way, the number of sales that they make in a day is streamlined to who comes to their shop. God forbid nobody comes to that shop that day. Do you know that they never make any sale that day? So now considering them having a mobile app whereby you can just order from anywhere that you are. So you can, you can already imagine how much sales they'll be making. In the day, they might not even have up to like five or 10 customers come to their shop, but through their heart, they have made thousands of sales. Do you understand now? Yes, I get it. Mm -hmm. So you, really as a US designer, you really need to know, like you need to know what you're building. You need to know the, um, how efficient it's going to be. You need to know the importance of what you're building because if you yourself, you don't know what you are building. <laughs> the, the person you are building for, would, <laughs> of course, will not take you serious. So I hope I've been able to answer your question. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, who raised the hand the other time? Okay, I was the one. Okay, okay, Ghania. Ghania, it's okay. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. I have a similar question with what Josh just asked. Okay. Uh, there's been this idea in my head, but I don't really know how to put it. It's on climate change or taking climate action. 
in the area of plastic waste. It seems to be more of a social enterprise thing. So I was wondering how I could make this idea generate income as in through app development. So I don't know how to go about it. Uh, I really don't understand you. I had waste management and I had- Okay, I'm talking yeah. in the aspect of taking climate action on reducing plastic waste and- What's what taking climate action? That English is big. Please, can you break it down? Let me understand what you mean. I'm just saying that as a citizen of Nigeria, okay. who okay. is concerned about climate change? Okay. Yes. So how can I use my idea of of encouraging people to adopt a lifestyle of reusing plastics and minimizing plastic waste. How can I generate that into a profit-making app? Okay, okay, I think I understand you now. Um, okay, one thing again that makes money for UX um, researchers or UX designers, the thing is sometimes you don't even need to wait for somebody to employ you. You can actually employ yourself. Um, basically, what do we do? We are, we are trying to solve problem. anything that we're, that we're developing, that we're doing. The, the, the end is that we're trying to solve a problem. We're trying to meet a need. Okay, so um, in this scenario that you brought, as a UX designer, okay, so I noticed that um, there's waste everywhere. There's plastic. I think that's what you're trying to focus on, plastic everywhere. People don't probably dispose refuge everywhere and probably it affects climate change, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so one thing you could do is, um, do you know that you could partner with um, like a refuse dump um, organization? Okay, so we have local refuse dump organizations. There are some that just come to the neighborhood and just come to, to pick, they just come to pick your and go. That's what they do like every day. Do you know, you could now, um, you could partner with them as a UX designer and build them a solution. You could build them an app such that they now have a wider range of customers. We have a wider range of customers for um, those people now. It might be that they just operate in maybe Ojuelegba, Lagos. Maybe that's the only place they, they operate. But by the time you partner with them, and your um, app is giving them visibility. You know, there's a wider range of customers. Now, they might, well, you might have to, well, if they have more than one truck, even if it's one truck, they could work on scheduling. They could schedule pickups. Okay, so now that you now have customers at um, Ikeja, you have customers at, customers at Maryland, and these people operate only in Ojolegba. Okay, so first of all, how did they get customers at Maryland and Ikeja? It's through your app. That's number one. Because before then, nobody knew that they were you know, picking up refuse. But your app gave them visibility, the wider range of customers. And by then, they can now incorporate those people to be their customers. And now they go doing pickups at Maryland. They go doing pickups at Ikeja. Now they have a larger range of customers. They are making more money at the end of the day. Do you understand? I do. Yes, I do. I get it. Thank you. Okay, you get it right. Yes. Okay, so, so just let's have it at the back of our mind that everything we are, we are building, everything we are doing, we are trying to meet a need. We are trying to see one and Doris, Doris, please, you can unmute your mic. Um, hello. Okay, I wanted to ask uh, on this same part, on this same issue now. Okay. Would logging in, would uh, people using the app, like maybe clicking on or logging in, would do? Does that generate income for the stakeholders too? No, it does not. It does not. Okay, let me ask you a question back. When you go to shop right and you go window shopping, does it generate money for them? 
no but I, I was just thinking maybe like him yeah. uh, you know on blogging and all that you no know, per click and all that if that such thing exists in app development too okay wait you are saying two different things now you said logging in you said logging in yeah logging in or app. are there things they will, there yeah, there, that people could click in on the app that could Okay, so, like I said, it still depends on your product, what your product is about. If your product, okay, like the example I cited, like a pastry shop, um, people logging into your app does not generate you any money. God help you, they log in and they don't buy anything. It does not generate anything to you. It's just, it's just like going to, um, going to shop rights and you look around and probably maybe what they are selling is too expensive for you or maybe a particular product that you're trying to buy, they don't have it. You walk out, it does not generate any money to them. Do you understand? Yes, Sorry. I do. Yeah, I do, thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Any other questions? Exactly, Edosa says, at Doris, it brings more customer to your business. Yes, and that is why we need to be particular about our products, what we are building. Because at the end of the day, like, like the saying goes, first impressions last, it lasts longer. Like there are some people that will come to your site and we come to your, to your site. And if you are not able to convince them, if you are not able to make them stay, if your site is not appealing, or they are not able to um, use your app, or they are not able to perform a particular product. At the end of the day, you are not you are not meeting any, and such customer might just leave and never come back. Do you understand? Such customers might actually leave and never come back. So impressions, the impressions are very important. That's why you need to be particular when you are building an app to make sure that when the customers are coming, they are hooked. Have you ever noticed that, okay, for somebody that is new, I don't know if anybody has used Alibaba or AliExpress before. The first time that you logged into Alibaba or AliExpress, um, did you notice that, excuse me, did you notice that you're able to view products? Yes. Anybody? Yes. Okay. Yes, beautiful. And the thing is you have not even created an account. You have not created an account but then you are able to view products. They are trying to lure you. They are trying to make you see that, okay, this is what, is, this is what we are selling. You know? Everything is fine. It's beautiful. It's cheap. It's this, it's that. They are trying to appeal to your sense of, of, of sight, your visuals. That's why they appeal. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so I remember, I remember, not, oh, God. I've had terrible experiences buying on e-commerce sites. <laughs> have you ever, I don't know if anybody have ever experienced this, that you... <laughs> That thing of what you ordered compared to what you got. <laughs> Has anybody experienced that? Feedback, please. No, I didn't get you at what. Yes, I said, like, probably you ordered something on e commerce sites. And I mean, you ordered something and they brought it to you, and you're like, no, no, this is not what I ordered. <laughs> Has that happened to anybody? Not me. But maybe, but maybe, yeah, <laughs> maybe. But has happened but not <laughs> well it has happened to me i think i experienced it too i ordered some me, flash please. drives Good. i ordered some so flash happened? drives there what happened i don't know i was told it was supposed to be an otg uh, flash that okay. would connect your phone to your laptop to your laptop here yeah. and, and when they I think it? the band was supposed to be 16 gig but when okay. you received product then i think it was like four gig or something that was just okay. that could, it could accommodate four gig, but it would display sixteen gig on your on your computer. So that was <laughs> Imagine like that. a real mess for okay. us there. That one, that one is even bad. That one is even bad. Okay, for for me actually, when the last one I remember, I ordered this very nice dress on. I think it was on Jumia. I think it was on Jumia. On my when they brought the dress. <laughs> It was looking like one about made. In fact, I could practically see the thread. It looked like they just they just quickly sealed this thing and they just brought it sharp, sharp. The dress didn't even have a label. And if you see what I saw on the e-commerce site, okay, so what did they do? 
they were actually trying to appeal to my sense of sight. So they uploaded a very final version. <laughs> <laughs> they uploaded a final version of that product so that they could lure me to buy. I'm not saying that we should do that anyways, but I'm just saying that they understand the fact that first impression lasts longer. So we need to be particular when we are designing our products. We need to, um, the four, so there is four um, rules of design or um, four important things to note when we are designing. Our products must be, it must be useful. Do we know? Okay, don't let me don't let me tell us. Okay, so there are four things that we need to know when we are designing anybody. There are just four or three. It depends on where you read it from. Anybody? 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 Hello. Is it that we don't know? Authentication of the site. Mm, no. I mean, I don't know. I think they're the question. Yes, I said when you are designing a product, that four things are important, like four main things. Okay, you so can I try? Too. It's not like I know. I just I want to try. Okay. I was just giving like, you like, a good. It must be visually Sorry. appealing. The experience. Yes, visually appealing. I would say <laughs> you saw that from no, no, no. <laughs> must be a need. Okay. Must be something visually like... appealing, even though it's not on it, but it's also very important. Any other person? Easy to navigate. Easy to navigate. That is um usable. It's actually for so I would say usable, easy to navigate. So it's not enough for you to develop the products. Can people use the product? So that's navigation. Okay, another person. It must be efficient. It must be efficient. I would say efficient is useful. So that's another one. It must be useful. So it's not that the product is just fine anyhow, but at the end of the day, it's not serving any purpose. It's not useful. Do you get? Okay, so another one. Anybody? It must, solve the problem. It must be findable. It must be what? Findable. Did you say findable? Yeah. Okay, but it's not on my four list. But then, of course, your product has to be out there for people to use it. Any other person before I go on? Must be able to solve a problem. Is that what she must be able to solve a problem? Yes, that's also. Um, that's also useful. It must be useful. It must actually be solving a problem. It must actually be okay. So let me just go ahead from here. Also, it must be equitable. Okay, what does it mean to be equitable? It means that a wide range of people must be able to use it. I can't develop a product now and develop it in AUSA. You know, that way <laughs> you're already streamlining your users. It means anybody that does not understand. AUSA or speak AUSA might not be able to use your app. So, I mean, that's a barrier already. So when you are designing your products, you must put equi um, equity in mind. Um, look at something that a vast number of people can use, something that can cut across any race, any nationality, any, I don't know. Of course, you would have age group of people that you're trying to target, but within that age group too, you might, you should look at it reaching a wide number of people too. And the last one is it must be enjoyable. Enjoyable. <laughs> Have you ever used any products that that product is very useful actually? Like it's serving purpose, but you don't enjoy using it. Anybody? Can you give an example of such products? Yep. I I tried using Microsoft Teams that I did not enjoy. Oh, Jesus, I thought it was only me. Thank you so much. <laughs> I hate that app. As I hate it with passion. I don't know. As in the interface is too busy. I don't even understand it. Yeah, I only too use it when I do understand. Sorry? It's not flexible. It's too big, G. It's oh, too... it's too cumbersome. It's, it's just choking. Ah, I thought it was only... I was still telling somebody this yesterday. We're supposed to have a, a call on Teams. I was like, ah, oh, Jesus, can't you just use Zoom? Like, but then... It's useful, but ah, it's not enjoyable. 
Anybody? Okay. Discord. You said? Discord. Discord. Okay, I don't know which app that is. Discord. I'm not sure. What does it do? Yeah. Similar, similar to Slack, but it's very, oh. very busy. Okay, I've not even heard of it. Slack, Slack 2 is, oh, well, when I first came on Slack, I was, in fact, I went offline. When I went, I went out of here. You said? Yeah, it's Slack. It's Slack. Slack is hard, but this code is worse. <laughs> I, know that I don't I don't understand this code. It's I've been for some time. I do just I just left it. <laughs> I just As left you, it. you can imagine. So imagine the number of people that sign in to Discord and they eventually leave their account and don't use that account. So at the end of the day, you can see that <laughs> don't let us say that it's a useless app. I've not used it, so I'm not going to judge. But at the end of the day, that's what happens when you build an app that's is not enjoyable. Even when it's meeting need, except if there's no alternative. If there's an alternative, my, my brother, your app will be redundant. People will not use it. Telegram too. Ah, Telegram too can be cumbersome. Telegram is very useful. Which day did I discover that you can actually do a video call on Telegram? I did not know. I'm like, wow. Telegram is powerful. Telegram is, is so powerful, so powerful. But then it's, it can be cumbersome. Okay, read one says this code is cool. <laughs> I use it every day, but I never use Slack. Well, I guess he has mastered the use. He has mastered the use. Uh, okay, let me just read some stuff on the good charts before we continue. Okay. It does says more customers mean more sales and more profits, of course. Of course. <laughs> Color they say is the size that pissed me off. Size of what? Mary and AliExpress, yes. Okay, so I have a question here. Abib Lahi says, how do we know if we are conducting a good research? As a researcher, so the question this way: Before you conduct any um, research, even if it's a, if if it's for, depends on the kind of research. First of all, because sometimes your research is for a new product or for an existing product. If it's for a new product, in a way, you have a problem, or yeah, you have a problem in mind that you're trying to solve. So you going to conduct user research is for you to, so you have some facts in your mind. So in a way you are trying to validate your assumptions or the fact that you have in your mind already, you're trying to validate it. So by the time you are conducting your research, okay, that's why I said research, research is as in a cut across every phase of your, of your design. As in there's no time that you're not researching, you are always researching. And that is why you need to do it often. There's a saying that says rich, research often feel, feel fast, feel forward, feel fast. And what that means is that when you research often, it just helps you to quickly get back on track. You won't have designed your whole product. And at the end of the day, you now go for user testing. You now see that what you're designing, number one, it does not, it does not meet the, the user need. It does not meet their need, or maybe the users don't understand. Or maybe, I mean, does not meet the industry standard. That is why you need to be, um, why you're designing, like you need to test. Okay, so we are going to be talking about, um, not today anyways, later on in the course, we're going to introduce you to wireframing, um, to wireframing, to user flows, user journey, perhaps user journey, empathy maps and all that. All those things are still part of research because as you are doing it, you are still, researching because you still take it back to the user. Even when the um, app is not completely developed, you take it back to the user. You try and see there's a way we do those kind of research. 
Um, you can try and see if they can understand what you have built so far. You just give it to them. Okay, so there are two types of research like that. We have moderated user testing and we have unmoderated. Moderated is you are there, you are present. You have created maybe um, probably low file, low fidelity. That's your wireframe for your low fidelity. Low fidelity is a, is a bit higher than wireframe. So it's right in front of your user and you just tell them that, okay, you can just tell maybe like, okay, if it's a press pastry shop how you can tell your user, okay, I want you to order a pastry from what you have designed. So you just observe what the person is doing. If the person is not able to find um, what to order, maybe the person cannot even find the pastry to order, or maybe the person can find the pastry, but the person does not know where to order it, or maybe the person has ordered it, the person does not know where to check out. Do you understand? All those things will help you to know, okay. And of course, you are not doing it on one person, you are, you are doing it on a wide, maybe like um, three to five people. So at the end of the day, you would look at, you, you do your or um, affinity mapping, you'll be able to extract from your research how many people were able to see the pastry, how many people were able to order the pastry, how many people were able to go to the checkout. Do you understand? So as each phase, um, really, there's really no way to know, to know that you're doing a good research, except if you do it often, if you do it often. So by the time you do your research and you tell your customers to, or your users, you tell them to do a particular um, task and they're able to do it successfully, then you know that you're on track. You know that you're on track. And part of the question that you ask them, um, you'll be able to know that, okay, is this thing really meeting their need? Is this something that they really want? And it's not that you're just assuming and just building something you just want to build. So Abibolai, have I answered your question? Join us, uh, usability useful. Kabir says functional and easy to use. Very good, very good. Solve the problem, give your said. Kabi Bulai, are you on call? Have I answered your question? <laughs> Baba Sunday says your generator too, useful but not enjoyable. What do you mean? Baba Sunday, can you speak up? What do you mean is not? <laughs> <laughs> it's not enjoyable. Yeah, Is it because it's yeah. chopping your money? It's chopping your full money. <laughs> Why do you mean it's not enjoyable? Noisy alone now. Yeah. I guess you're using that past my neighbor. <laughs> Have you used a generator that you do you will not even know that the generator is on? You've not <laughs> you've not seen such generators. Well, Trust God, trust God for such generators. <laughs> generators that will just be, I come and say, Missile, like you won't even know that anything is on. Let me see, Baba Sunday, true. <laughs> Who is talking? I think somebody. Can... Yeah, Baba that can I reward you? Okay, I muted you. I'm going to you. Okay, Esther asks a question. Is, she says, you talked about user research costing researcher much money. <laughs> my question is, am I going to be using my personal money? <laughs> or the company gives... <laughs> of course, you cannot use your personal money when you're not developing something personal. It's not something personal, so you cannot use your personal money. You cannot use your personal money. That's why you need to make your... Um, the organization, you need to make them see the importance of performing the research. You understand? So, of course, they need to fund the research. <laughs> your work, okay. You are not using your personal money. You are not using your personal money. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sorry, I skipped the question. Miriam says, How do apps like Facebook and the like generate money? Okay, have you, had, have you heard about some Facebook adverts? Okay, so Facebook is like a shop, it's like a mall. Okay, it's like asking a question that how do 
how do the money generate money? Do you know that every okay? Do you know that is only one person usually? Okay, so we call it shop right, but shop right is just one mall inside. It's just one store inside the main mall. I'm hearing one noise. Let me try and use the press. I think it's Tochi. Okay, it's Tochi. Okay, so um, like I was saying, okay, so in a mall we have like let's say we have like a thousand stores. Um, so it's like asking that how do that mall generate fund? Number one, everybody that uses that mall, including ShopRite itself, will pay rent. Do you understand? Everybody that uses that mall will pay rent. And in a way to, okay, so they, they gave you a place to come and advertise your product and sell. The point is the more products, the more product you sell or the more successful you are, the more successful they are. Because at the end of the day, okay, so, um, um, okay, so uh, I'm trying to look for a product. Okay, so I sell human hair and I'm at the mall. The more I sell, do you know the more I sell, the more that I sell to as the more owner. Because if I'm making sales, and ah, who is that? If I'm making sales, it means next day I'll be able to pay rent again. I mean, it means next I'll be able to pay rent again. So at the end of the day, the owner of the mall is making money while you're making money. The owner of the mall too is making, is being successful because your success, their own success lies in your own success, actually. If you're not making sales, you might close down your shop and you will go. At the end of the day, that shop will be empty. They are not getting any revenue from that shop. Okay, so uh, Baba Sunday says, <laughs> yes. He says, Miriam, basically advertising, 98% of Facebook, Facebooks, that's eight billion dollars mm, revenue in 2020 was from advertising. So there's a lot, um, a lot of people are into Facebook ads now. Have you been on Facebook and you see one thing? Somebody, you just see that sleek hair by the side. They'll just be touching it like this. That come and buy your hair. <laughs> Somebody paid for that too. Don't think that is not even Facebook at all. That's that's it's, it's none of their business. They just rented a space for the person. The person took the space and the person is advertising in your face. As you are scrolling down again, you will see burger. You see Mac McDonald's burger. The thing is just hiring you, and you are just all of a sudden you are hungry. You want to buy burger. So at the end of the day, that's where they make their money from. They help. They they rent space for people for advertising, actually. And you know the number of people that come to Facebook. <laughs> as you don't even think about it, a lot of people spend they spend time online. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I've gone through all the chats. Any other question before we go to research report? Okay, Olushegum, can I have you? Olushegum, Abi Olushe. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, do you have like a timestamp? You have a timestamp. Um, for the project. I mean, no, for the class. How do your class run? Oh, okay, okay. Um, usually we the 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 class was shortened, so things change. Usually we start from nine to um eleven, then we take okay. a ten minute break, then come back. That was when the time was shortened. Okay, okay. I just wanted to be sure. Okay, so it's 11 o'clock. Okay, about two minutes to 11 now. And um, I want to ask if we should continue. The next thing we are looking at as, is our research reports. Should we continue or should we go on a break? And how much break do you want to go for? 30 minutes, one hour. So I need responses, please. Let's pick up. Dorothy. I think we should continue because... Uh, there's a soft skills session by 11 Oh, okay. So, yes, that's true. So let's okay. just continue. We just have 30 minutes. Then, right? I think we should have a break before the soft skills session. We are not coming back to the class after the soft skills. Yeah. Today, you're not coming to class at all. We are not coming back now. Class is supposed to end by 12 Are you serious? Yes. Yeah. It was it was nine to two p.m. before, but it has been shortened. 
So, mm, so 12 30. Wow. Yeah. Wow, nice to see I should have asked this when I came. Oh, God. We have not even really gone into the business of today. I'm very sorry. I was not, I was not aware. Somebody should help um, Rachel with the attendance. I don't think I can find it here. Somebody should help her with attendance. Ah, um, I didn't know. Okay, so let's just slide in into the research report. Okay, so we have discussed our research plans and by now, um, perhaps you already have your research. Perhaps you already have your research. Now we are going to be going to the research reports. So from your research, from the research done, you are going to generate a report. Let me share my screen. Can we all see my screen, please? Yes. Yes. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so we are going to generate a report from our reports. When you have done your research, um, you need to generate a report. So this is a template. I don't know if you have this template already. Do you have it already? If you don't, I can share with you. We don't. We don't. Okay. Okay, I'll share with you later. Okay, so I will have to be very fast now. Ah, oh God, we spent a lot of time on that. I'm so sorry. Okay, so um, the title of your research. Of course, the title of your research, your team, team name. I'm sure that each team has a name or something, or maybe it's a number, maybe group one, group two, <laughs> put your team. Then you might, okay, there's a slide for that for the name, okay. So just put your group name, then your email, that's not necessary because it's a group thing anyways. Okay, so this template is not, is not, um, is not, what's the English now? It's not, it doesn't mean that this is how your research um, reports must come back. Do you understand? So it's not that you want to clone this um, template, it is a guide. So it could be more, it could be less. So you can take out anything that you don't need from it. So do we understand that? Okay, so um, on the content, please, I need feedback often so I know that we are together. Yes, I'll share, Kabir, I'll share with you. Okay, so the content, um, your project team, of course, um, your team, the scope of your project, participants criteria, that's the, um, the criteria that you use in choosing um, who you are interviewing. Is very important. Then the takeaways from the um, research that you got, the insights that you got, then con competitive landscape, personas, that's much later, product feedback, next step. Let's move on. Okay, so here we have a page for our team. So we'll be writing the names of everybody in the team and what their role is. I guess everybody's UX designer. So you may not have a researcher. So like I said, this is just a template. So you can edit it, remove what you don't need and put what is essential. So for your products, you might just have like random pictures of your products, just like you have on this page. Like you're designing for um, the, like Olu is designing for healthcare. You might just have pictures of um, people, maybe somebody that is being tested by, by a doctor or maybe a picture of, um, a clinic, a picture of people, I don't know, anything that just depicts what you're, um, um, what you're designing for. So random, random things actually. Okay, so the scope, like we have said, um, the scope of your, of your research, like we have discussed. So this is where you document your scope. This is where you document the participant criteria. So, uh, for somebody, okay, for Olu that is doing a project about healthcare, do you have, Olu please, I'm talking to you now. Um, do you have like, okay, what are the criteria that you're looking at? What type of users are you looking at? Um, people below the age of 70. Below the age of 70, okay. Yeah. So there's no, um, there's no minimum. Yeah, we're looking at 15 to like 70. 50. But then they are grouped into 
<laughs> but we have them grouped like 15 to 25 and like that. It's not necessary. 15 to 70 is fine. Oh, it's just okay. that, oh, yes, yes. It's, that's, it's just important to, for you to know who is your um, user. Oh, okay. So that's, that's the most important thing. Then um, which kind of people are you targeting? Are you targeting um, students? Are you, are you targeting working class? Are you targeting retired civil servants? Are you targeting civil servants? Are you so who exactly are you targeting? Those are the things that you need to put into consideration too. And I want everyone to, to, um, to, to note that who you are considering would have a to have an effect on your, your design, actually. The wider your participants, the wider your design will be. So you might want to streamline it, your participants. You might just want to design something simple so that you don't um, give yourself too much work. Like I said, is we have just four weeks to do this and you're going to develop an actual product. So let's, let's take note when we are choosing our participants. Let's let's look for people that are very. Let's not go over the board. Let's not shoot ourselves in the leg, basically. Then from our um, from our research, we'll have insights. So for participants, these are participants. Well, for if you are done interview, you probably have like three to five people. So from here, you can have the participant name, what they do, what they and what they do rather their name and what they do, then key insights, the things that you got from, from your research. Competitive landscape. Okay, I think I'm going to pen this. Since I'm going to share it with you, I'm not going to discuss this. Let's just go straight to affinity mapping. Let's go straight to affinity mapping because that's, everything is interwoven actually. I'll share that with you, Sha. Um, Olusha, please drop your email. So I'll send that to you via email. Okay, so let's go straight to affinity mapping. I think we need to do affinity mapping before. We still have competitors analysis. Okay, so let's do affinity mapping. Okay, so um, affinity mapping, affinity mapping. What is affinity mapping? Are we together? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I want us to see a video before we continue. A video on affinity mapping. Have we have we heard of it? Has anybody heard of affinity mapping before or affinity yes. diagram? Yes, I have. Okay. Okay. Can you explain what it is before we dive in? Don't 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 sit from what is on my in screen. Los Angeles. One minute, please. Okay, so what is that? Let me take it's basically, that you must it's basically um, rightly. They all talk about diagram. Is what? I, I hear me. Yes, you said it's what? Okay, so it's like after you make your research, there are always going to be like some points from the research that you want to look into. So it's like writing those points in like a sticky note and um, sorting the, the points based on their themes, sorting them into rows and columns based on their themes to know which one you are going to work on first and which one you are going to work on next. Okay, okay, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so let's just see this um, video before we continue. It's a very short one, I think it's about three minutes. So please, let's pay attention. And please, I need feedback. If it's breaking up, please let me know immediately so I can um, do something about it. Thank you. Please, let's pay attention. This method was developed by a Japanese anthropologist, Jiro Kavikata, in the 1960s. So what is it and why is it useful in a design and research process? Affinity diagramming is a relational visual representation of the team's insights and observations. 
It's a method used to meaningfully cluster observation and insights from research. Affinity means grouping a common experience. A diagram is a simplified drawing showing the appearance, structure, or workings of something, a schematic representation. So when do you use affinity diagramming? After making various simple observations, such as hearing and seeing. After talking to people, like when you're conducting workshops and interviews for qualitative research. Or even when using something more quantitative, such as surveys. But how is affinity diagramming done? To start off, write down all insights and observations and posts, and then place them randomly on a surface, for example, a whiteboard. Now cluster the post-its based on correlations to significant groups. You'll end up with an overview of the ideas, intents, problems, or wishes. But why use affinity diagram? This is a great tool for interpretation. It helps you synthesize the Okay. Now that we have watched the video. What's wrong with you? Okay, so now that we have watched the video, can somebody tell me what they think affinity mapping is now? So if you didn't know it now, I mean before, now you know it. So can anybody quickly share? What do you think of infinite mapping is? Let me take it away. You don't see what's on my screen. Anybody? Hello, can we hear me? Yes, I can hear you. <clears throat> okay, so. What we watch, what do we think of anything happening? What did we get from the video? Does it make any sense? Even if yeah. you don't explain it, it's, any sense. it's um, sorting ideas into group. No, it's not ideas, sorting reports into group. You said something? The uh, result of your research into groups. Okay, okay, beautiful, beautiful. Um, Chine do says organize idea, beautiful. Any other person? You have any other thing to say? I've shared the link, you can watch again if you want to. Okay, because we have very limited time. Does anybody want to say something? Okay, Miriam says grouping similar ideas together, thank you. Okay, let's just dive right into it because our time is fast spent. We have less than 18 minutes. I'm going to be very fast. Please, let's go ahead with me. If I break up at any point in time, please let me know if I go far. Okay, so what is affinity mapping or affinity diagram? Basically, after going out to do our research, we come back with a whole bunch of data, both useful and useless data. Let me tell you, you are going to have a lot of useless data. But um, affinity mapping, help us to gather ideas, put our thoughts together on one place. Okay, so when we are doing affinity mapping, we're going to use a lot of sticky notes. Um, you're gonna need sticky notes, a pen or a Sharpie. What do you call it? Um, marker, you both call it Sharpie. A pen, um, a marker, um, I don't know. Okay, sticky notes stick to the wall, so you don't need, you don't need a pen. Basically, that's all you need, and a board, if you have one. If not, you can use a wall. Okay, so what we do basically is, okay, I think I'm, okay. So what you do basically is all the ideas that we have gotten from our research, we put them down on the board, like you saw in the video, you put everything down first. Okay, no, the first thing you do is you, say, you extract it. Okay, I think I'm going to the process. It's right here. Let me just read what we have here before we go into it. Okay, it says, what is affinity mapping? An affinity diagram is a tool that gathers large amounts of language data, ideas, opinions, issues, and organize them into grouping 
into groupings based on their natural relationship. That is, if they have something in common. Um, the affinity process is often used to group ideas generated by brainstorming. When do we use affinity mapping? After user research. So that is why we are taking affinity mapping right now in this um, program. So after user research, because we assume that you should be in the process of um, doing your user research, or perhaps you have done it, or you are doing it already. So the next thing is to do your affinity mapping. Um, so it says after user research to analyze the data gotten and draw useful insights from it, which will invariably guide your research. Okay, so what's the process of doing affinity mapping? Number one, from your, okay, uh, it depends on the kind of um, research that you did, either qualitative or quantitative. If it is qualitative, that is if it, if it was the interview. Um, most of the time, sometimes you can have recorded interviews. So let's assume it's a recorded interview. You are watching a game, or maybe it's an audio. I would suggest that if you cannot do video, do audio because so that a, like two or three people in the team can listen to it. Because sometimes what you are hearing is not what the second person will hear. At the end of the day, each of us, we have a bias. I don't know if Mr. Muiwa um, has touched on that. We might touch on that later. Each of us, we have a bias and it's not, it's not, it's not a bad thing. Bias comes from a, um, a background, a biological background, um, social background, spiritual background, um, from ethnic belief, so many things. So sometimes somebody is saying something, but because you have a bias in that area, you are hearing something else. So why um, recorded interviews are very important is so that two or three people can listen to the same that's why I say, if you cannot do video, you can do audio. Um, so, two or, two, th um, so two or three people can listen to it and draw, draw data from it. I'm sure that at the end of the day, when two or three people do it, you'll be wondering that, ah, well, this person, I didn't hear this thing, or this is not the way I heard it. And this person wrote it this way. It just tells you that there's, each of us have a bias, actually, basically. So it's very important. So even if we are, we are using um, quantitative, we are using surveys and, and questionnaire, we can try and do, let's try and do, let's try and do interviews. It's very important actually, but if we can't, no problem, but it's very important. And let's record, we can do audio recording. So you can listen to it over and over again to draw out. Okay, so in the process, you extract data from the interview script. What has the user said? Because at that point, you can't really, it's not easy to say you are doing interview. Don't, I don't even advise it that you should be writing while you are doing your interview. That's why it's good that you do a recorded interview so that at that point, what you are doing, the major thing you are doing is you are observing the user or the person you are interviewing. You are observing them because they might be saying one thing and be meaning and that thing with their body language. So you are, you, you are looking at their body language, you're looking at the expression and everything. So just because you cannot write while you're doing interviews. So after the interview, we now come and listen again or watch again, then you now start drawing the data from your interviews for each participant. So for when you are um, doing affinity mapping, we're going to go into my room. I'm doing my room. Um, I'm going to mute you. Thank you for disturbing our class. Okay, so ah, time has gone. Let's just do affinity mapping. Sure. Okay, so we're going to use a lot of sticky notes. I would suggest that you use different colors for different participants. So if you have Femi, Kemi, Dupe, Femi should probably be blue. Like everything Femi is saying, be blue. Everything Dupe is saying, probably purple. Everything Lola is saying should be red so that you know who is saying what. Then the second step in the process is you record, record each idea on a card. After you have extracted it, record it on their sticky notes. At your midday, your wrist and... Okay, let me just take you before we continue. At your midday, can we have you? Okay, I'm um, sorry. Are we using an um, actual like sticky notes or we use 
Like yeah, African. you know the mirror <laughs> Okay. I yes, it was yeah. like Well, you could actually, uh, you could do. The thing is, as a US designer, if you like it or not, you will need to buy a lot of sticky notes. So personally, when you are doing your own research, you still have to use sticky note at home, do you get? But for this project, of course, we'll use my robot because I don't, I, I don't want to put you through that trip. Thank you. Have to with them. Yes, yes. Use my robot. So it's part of the things you're supposed to do today. Introduction to my robot. Yeah. Okay. So um, the thought process, you look for ideas that seem related. You look for ideas that seem related. So fourth one, I want us to look at some samples. Now that I'm rushing. The fourth one, you sort cards into groups until all the cards have been used and you delete useless data. Like I said, you're going to have some useless data. Okay, so what is a useless data? A useless data is something that does not contribute to the design that you're doing or the product that you're trying to build. If it's data, yes, but if it's not going to contribute to what you're doing, then it's useless. You don't need it. You don't need to. You can just put it by the side or you can just delete it. It's not, it doesn't mean anything. Then you give a name to each category like a title, then from your mapping, from your affinity map, you draw insights. That's exactly what, why we are going through all this process is because we want to draw insights. We want to get what exactly the user wants, how they want it, and we, so that we know how we design. Yep, 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 yep. Mm -hmm. So I have a sample here. I have a sample here. Ah, your midday, your hand is still up. Oh. Is it that you forgot to drop your hand or you want to say something else? I forgot to drop your hand. <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's fine. Um, you can see my pin. Let me okay. Let me share another one. Okay, let me share my screen. I have another one. I think I prefer that one. Okay, can we see my screen? Okay, so this is, can we see my screen please? Let me reduce. Yes. Okay, so this is an affinity mapping for a florist shop. This is just a sample. Okay, so I'm one, I, I know that somebody is probably wondering that, okay, why do we have so much colors? Each color, it, it, it depicts a participant. If you look at the blue one here, I hope you can see my mouse. It says image. The title is image. If you look at the, the blue one here too, is image. The blue one here too is image. So it means each color is for each participant actually. So like I said, use a color of sticky notes for each participant so that you know who is saying what. So this is an example of an affinity map. Um, okay, so after this person probably did their interview, all the participants said something concerning zip code, concerning delivery, concerning date confusion. That is why the person, I'm sure it's from all what they said here, that the person is able to name this category zip code and delivery date confusion. Okay, so let me just read a few. The first one, P, that's yellow, the yellow sticker. It says P is wondering why she's being asked for zip code and delivery, delivery dates on clicking shop now button. Okay, M says, am I in the right page? My mind expects to see a list of flower options on clicking the shop now button. Man says, okay, I think M is man. Okay, I think M is man because it's the same color. Let me just keep that. MT says, MT doesn't understand why shop now button leads to delivery and zip code information page instead of the shopping page. So it means that they have done this particular um, research now, I think they've already developed something. Probably they, they developed a low file and they sent it out for users to use. So because what's the comments I'm seeing here, it means that they have actually used a, 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 an app or a product and they're now giving feedback based on what they used. So from what they are saying, I think on that app, when they clicked on shop now, it takes them to um, delivery information, which shouldn't be, should probably bring out a list of um, she bring out a list of the flowers available so that they even know what they want to buy and all that. Okay, navigation menu, let's check that out. It says Padma, 
Okay, that's P. Padma looks for homepage link in the navigation menu. D looks for the homepage link in the, man <laughs> in the navigation menu. MH checks for the homepage link in the navigation menu. Upon not finding it, it clicks on the title in the header. Okay, so I mean, affinity mapping just, okay, so by the time you have done your research and you have written all your data, you will see that because you are asking your participant the same questions, except maybe for just a few follow-up questions. But at the end of the day, you are still asking them some range of questions. Like you're still trying to get the same information from them. So after putting all your data on your board, you will begin to see, okay, I think this person is saying, okay, maybe you, maybe we have something like, um, okay, okay, maybe you are, you are trying to design an app for a pastry shop and you, you, did, a, you did your interview and um, somebody is saying, oh, I want to be able to customize my cake. I want to be able to customize my cake from an app as in to design my cake. I want to see the way my cake will look on the app before I order it. Another person says, hmm, um, I want to be, I want to be able to, um, oh, example, 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 example. Okay, I want to be able to see how high my cake is on the app. Like I want to be able to see the size and probably the height of the cake on the app before I order it. Because you just wrote six inches, you just wrote eight inches. I want to be able to have an idea. I want to see it. So at the end of the day, when you look at everything, you see that, okay, this, this, what this person is saying is sounding like this, this information from another participant, and it's sounding like this, it's sounding like this. At the end of the day, you group everything together. So by the time you group ideas together, you have like maybe four or five ideas grouped together. You now, based on the um, ideas on it, you will now name that group. Do you understand? So when you name the group, then you'll be able to say, okay, this is the insights we are getting from it. Then it will help you get the insight that you need when you are designing. Okay. If you look at this board now, you can see order. It says P wants to see seasonal collection and bestseller before shop now in the home page. I think that's like <laughs> that's like excess excess data that is probably not useful to their own data. That's why they wrote orders. So you might have something like that too in your own affinity map or affinity board. Oh God, we have four minutes left. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Uh, I don't like the fact that we have to end this class now. Do you have any questions, please? Or anything you want me to quickly run over? Because it looks like our class is over for today. We didn't even go, we didn't get to do competitive analysis. Yeah. My question is, so this um, affinity mapping, the information you get from affinity mapping is, is qualitative, right? Not, not quantitative. Or is it both? Okay. Um, your research is either qualitative or quantitative. Even if your research is quant quantitative, that's sorry. Even if your research is quantitative, any insights you are drawing, of course, has to be qualitative because this insight is what will now channel, is what will inform our decision, our, de um, our design decisions. Do we understand? Like anything you get out of it, all these things that we are doing now, all the research is just for you to understand what do the need, users need, what do they want, and how best to give them what they want. That is what all this research is all about. It's just to make our product, our design, to make it the best it can be. So anything that you're, any insight you're getting, <laughs> it has to be qualitative. That's why you need to, your affinity mapping tool is very important. You have to make sure that you're getting the right insights. You need to get the right insights. Do you understand? Have I been able to answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, thank you. Okay, any other question? Your soft skill is in two minutes. <laughs> Kabir say we need to digest and get back to you. <laughs> okay, please can we get the file? Which file exactly? 
Which file do you want to get? I'll send you, yes, I need to send you the template, the research template. Send me to Richard. I have not lost. I think I've lost Richard. Richard, please, can you send your email again? I'm so sorry. Please forward your email again. Thank you. Okay. So do we have any question? We have one minute. Uluwashe, yes, please. Someone should help Tonya with attendance. So Uluwashe, please, can I have your email again? So I can forward it to you, then you can forward it to the class. Thank you. <laughs> the slide. <laughs> you have the slide. Ah, so I don't know if you can have the slide. <laughs> But you can actually read up on these things online, actually. Actually. Ulushege, thank you. I think I've seen it. Yes, thank you. So do we have any um, questions, any observation, any contribution? Just one minute before we go. One minute. Anybody? Anybody, 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 anybody? Why are we quiet? Please, I need feedbacks. Now that the class is over, did we learn anything today? I need feedback. Did we learn anything today? Yes, yes we learned a lot. Yeah, we did. Just like you said, maybe we need to digest and get back to you. Oh, sure, we did. We learned something. Thank you. That's good. That's good. I'm sorry that we couldn't go far. I was, I was not, I was not informed. I didn't know that class was short. Oh. So any last thoughts before we go? I think your soft skill is starting about now. So any other thing before we cut it short? In the next 10 seconds, any other thing, any other thing, any other thing, any other thing? Naomi, I think you can take over the class if you need to. Naomi, I think I'm done. Naomi. Hi, I'm IDK. Yes, hi. Hi, Naomi. Naomi. Yeah, I can hear you. Anything? Yes, yes, I said we are done. So I guess. Oh, okay, okay, so, yes. okay, okay, okay. I'll end the call now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Bye, everyone. Right. See you tomorrow. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.